Physics is basically the study of the universe. It's how objects move and interact with each other and the world. Whether it be supergiant stars and black holes, or a ball, car, or aircraft, or an electron, photon, or atom. It's also the study of energy and forces that occur in nature. Now in the physics undergraduate curriculum, besides math majors, you will take more math than any other major, even all the engineering disciplines. You will have to often prove equations and understand them on a deeper level than engineers as well. So before you enter this major, make sure you really enjoy math and problem solving. Now for all these videos, hopefully you've taken calculus and physics in high school already. If not, that's okay, but I will be previewing a few equations and referencing some basic physics concepts throughout the videos. So for your curriculum, the first two or three classes will go over nearly exactly what you saw in high school physics. Projectile motion, forces, momentum and energy, then electricity and magnetism, then waves, optics, and mirrors. Then you'll move on to modern physics. This is partly learning special relativity and how space and time change for objects as they approach the speed of light, but mostly it will involve learning quantum mechanics and how particles like electrons, atoms, and photons even move and interact with each other. Whereas in classical mechanics, if you want to determine the motion of a ball, let's say, you use force equals mass times acceleration, or F equals MA. In quantum mechanics, for how a particle will move or even orbit, you use the Schrodinger equation. Don't let it scare you, you're years away from ever seeing this, but you can see how math involved physics really is. You'll do a class on classical mechanics, which is basically like your first physics class, where you'd see projectile motion, momentum, forces, and energy again, but now you increase the complexity of the problems. Like maybe as a projectile travels through the air, you now account for air friction or drag and must set up equations to determine its motion. You'll take a class on vibrations and waves, where you'll just look at the motion and equations of complex oscillating systems like springs and pendulums. Then also waves like ones on a string or an electromagnetic wave moving through air and space. Lastly, there's a class solely on electromagnetic waves where you look at Maxwell's equations, which again look complex, but don't worry, you wouldn't even see these till your last year probably. But these prove and explain how electromagnetic waves are created and how they move and interact in air, space, and different materials. This is basically a subfield in itself because radio waves, microwaves, cell phone and TV signal, Wi-Fi, visible light and lasers, radar, x-rays, radiation are all electromagnetic waves. The only real difference is their frequencies. On top of all that, you'll probably take two chemistry classes, then one class on circuits where you'll learn a very broad overview of resistor, capacitor, and inductor circuits, and how to analyze the voltage and current within them. Then you'd also learn some electronic circuits where you'd see transistors and diodes, which are the key components in all your electronics like computer and cell phone. So you might do some simple circuits with them, but then you'd also learn how they work and how the electrons behave within them using chemistry. Essentially, this is like four or five electrical engineering classes compressed and simplified into one. And this one just involves basic algebra rather than the intense math in a lot of your other classes. You'll also probably take one programming class. A common software you'd learn is MATLAB, where you can program or code plots and complicated physical systems, even something like a satellite orbit, on the computer, which is useful in physics and especially engineering for when something is too difficult to do by hand. Now after you learn this range of topics, you'll have a chance to further dive into different fields and subfields. The rest of this video is just a long list of those fields with a brief explanation and applications. The first subfield is optics. Optics goes over how lenses and mirrors affect light, it covers lasers and fiber optic cables for transmitting data quickly using light. Then there's relativity. You have special relativity which proves that as objects approach the speed of light, space and time change for that object, then general relativity says that time and space bend due to very large objects like planets all the way to black holes. This subfield you'd most likely only use if you went into research as opposed to some tech company. Quantum mechanics, as discussed earlier, is an entire subfield that is used to create semiconductor devices, quantum computers, atomic clocks, etc. Electromagnetism studies the physics of the combination of electric and magnetic fields and waves, like how atoms or particles will be affected in the event of an electric and magnetic field. 
If you like the electromagnetic waves, a very tangible engineering discipline is antenna design, which is what creates wireless signals or electromagnetic waves. This can be used for radio, cell phones, satellite communication, radar, and so on. A physicist would understand on a deep level the equations and how waves interact with the world when traveling, whereas an engineer, most likely electrical, would still know how to apply the physics, but maybe in less depth, but they'd also know how to create and shape the antenna, or techniques to protect against signal jamming, and so on. Classical mechanics is the motion of bodies under some force. This includes understanding forces on static systems, like bridges or similar structures, like a civil engineer would do, or the physics of airflow over objects that depend on it, like aerospace and mechanical engineers would see, or forces on orbiting objects like an astronautics engineer might see. A physicist would prove the equations and could apply them to complicated scenarios, whereas an astronautics engineer would just know the equations but apply them to way more applicable scenarios, like programming the path of the satellite's orbit, or maybe determining how to get from one circular orbit to another. Theoretical physics uses very advanced mathematical models and physics to then predict or rationalize physical phenomena. This would be like wormholes that are basically like a shortcut tunnel through the universe that could exist somewhere in space, or string theory that predicts very small or quantum strings make up the universe, or what happened before the Big Bang. Most likely to get a job in theoretical physics would involve university research as a professor with a PhD, or possibly, but unlikely, a funded national lab. Then astrophysics has similarities with theoretical physics, up to even multiple universes, black holes, and the possibility of time travel. But they also explore actual celestial bodies, like distant stars and galaxies, and radiation from the Big Bang. Astrophysics is kind of like a higher level field that requires knowledge of nearly all the other subfields, but applied to celestial objects and events that were just shown. And lastly, we have particle physics. Modern research in this field consists mostly of subatomic particles, or particles much smaller than atoms, like electrons, then also neutrons and protons, which themselves are made up of quarks. Quarks are an elementary particle, which means we don't know what else they are made up of. But there are other elementary particles besides quarks we've discovered. The most recent one found you may have heard of is the Higgs boson. Currently, there are dozens of experimental laboratories around the world that are working to find even more elementary particles that make up our universe by using particle accelerators and colliding particles together at nearly the speed of light, like the Large Hadron Collider in Switzerland. So this is an active field. One application of particle physics is in the creation of superconductors which have no electrical resistance, which can then apply to magnetism as you can see but particle physics can also be applied to quantum physics and even string theory. Now as a physicist, you could get a job at an engineering or tech company and often you'd be trained on how to use the necessary equipment if needed. But physics is a good degree to work with engineers because you will have base knowledge and a strong understanding on the physics of many engineering disciplines. Another option is to get a PhD and become a professor where you'll do research. Often your professors are only teaching a little bit and most of their time is spent doing research funded by the university. Another option is to work at a national lab, which you can just Google to find many. These are government funded labs all over the country where you just do research and development and perform experiments in the categories such as national security, clean energy, climate change, supercomputers, biotechnology, nuclear science, lasers, dark energy in the universe, high energy physics, etc. And the part two video is just going to be a long list of the research currently being done and some job opportunities.